Welcome to the Sooner of Light, all my beautiful, sexy tribe. First order of business, say hi to everyone. Charlotte, George, Abigail, Eddie, Sullivan, Anna, Cummins, Fairchild, Wilhite. Woo! Peter Coyle, my bro. Pri, Robert, Krista Huggins, Darnell Morgan from Canada. Rod Bland, Drum and Fool, Rena, Nancy, Darlene Osi, or Osa. Osa, Osi, David Amerson, Robert Harrison, Joe Terrier. What's up, Joe? Hello, everyone. Elwood, I figured it out. I don't know if Elwood is here. I watched my TV tonight, exactly 9 o'clock. My screen went dark. It's my TV. There's some sort of... Energy saver mode, so I have to reconfigure my camera to make it look somewhat presentable. Welcome to the Center of Light TV. Tonight we are talking about sitting in the lap of God. I have no idea where this is going. I have no notes. So we're going to get down first order of business. See anybody else arrived? Jackie Atwell. Hi. Uh, a couple of present uh, announcements real quick. September 21st and 22nd in Memphis, Tennessee at the Agri Center. $20 for two days, $15 for one day. Four Points Spiritual Expo. I'm going to be a keynote speaker there. Larry Flaxman on Ancient Aliens is going to be a keynote speaker there. Some other beautiful lady about organic living, organic eating. She's going to be a keynote speaker. So is Dr. Rita Louise, one of my dear friends. Oh my God, is she a powerhouse. Lots of vending booths, stones, healers, readers, your normal spiritual stuff. But I have no, no doubt whatsoever I did a presentation, an interview with Victoria Smith with Circle of Chi recently. She's the one putting on this phenomenal event on September 21st and 22nd. And I have no doubt I did some intuitive work for her. And it's going to be very successful. Nothing like a road trip. Get in your car. Come hang out with me. Arrive a day earlier. Come see me play music. We'll get up. We'll all go eat breakfast somewhere. And we get down to some Four Point Spiritual Expo business. Uh, in this forum, you will see a group of links. One is to donate for my work. Thank you very much for your support. I appreciate you greatly. Another is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Very important to me that you go to YouTube, youtube.com slash center of light radio. Subscribe, give me some thumbs up on some of the interviews that you might cater to. Let me know your thoughts in the comments box there. Uh, that will tell me what kind of guest you would like to see more of on Center of Light 
Radio. I always say what is happening on Earth is not about the Earth. What is happening on Earth is cosmic. I don't know if my screen to you is some funky, odd-looking color. <laughs> wow. Uh, what is happening on Earth is not about the Earth. What is happening on Earth is cosmic. Cosmic. I know it can be tough to grasp the little bit that's happening on Earth, which seems like a lot, but compared to the cosmos, this is only a minuscule of that which is taking place all over the universe in your local space, but greater inside of you. Tonight's presentation is sitting in the lap of God. All right, so we're going to be sitting down on God's lap. This is the Stargate. This is where we're going to do it. Though I talk about the heart being a Stargate over and over, you got to drive home the information. It's got to have time to integrate. We have to have time to apply it so we can therefore begin to experience it. But I'm going to change it up a little bit. I don't know how. I have no notes. I'm doing this completely off the cuff with trust of spirit as I choose to fall in now. That is sitting in the lap of God. I have learned to do this over a period of many years. You can truly use the imagery of this being you, which we know what we think is us, our consciousness, because of all of the sensory inputs, the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, taste, all that. But simply, if you just drop and pretend, imagination is everything. I made you in my image and my likeness, and as you think, therefore you create. So if I think and imagine I'm falling into my divine parent's lap, guess what you are doing? by mere intention alone but here's the kicker you don't have to do anything to be sitting in god's lap you're already there the intention is to bring you to a space of awareness as you sit on your divine parent's lap you're always there when you truly begin to understand who walks beside you at all times you will never be afraid ever again it's the releasing of your fear that allows you to become aware that you never left the lap of your divine parent Jesus Buddha your great grandmother <laughs> any and everything that means something powerful and beautiful to you helps you to become a better human being it could be a deity it could be a religion it could be any book it could be a phenomenal movie Sometimes movies take us to a magical space, sitting in the lap of God, is the presentation for tonight. My name is Keith Anthony Blanchett, Yanava. Take a short pause and get right back down to uh, the thick of it. See where it goes. I will be taking questions. So everyone prepare for some questions. Hi, Kristen Davis, Sonny, Charlotte. Um, question, Darlene, Anna, Jackie Atwell. I enjoyed your presentation, says Peter Coyle, earlier on the stunt with the stunt man. <laughs> Peter says he worked in TV. Thank you for revealing the information, love, and life, Peter. Brett, hi, buddy. Brian Thompson, Thomas, excuse me. Gonna be right back, stick around, short pause. When you realize who walks beside you at all times, you will never be afraid ever again. This song <laughs> is about someone making contact with the divine lover, your divine parent, Sit in the lap and tend to do it every day at every possible moment. And you will be created for the rest of your life. Be right back.
I will be with you always Until the end of time You will never be alone Welcome back to the Center of Light, my friends. Tonight we're talking about sitting in the lap of God. I want to say hi to all the newcomers, the Shashas in the house, Carmen. Hello, Carson Ann. Mary Amalung. Elwood's in the house. Elwood, it is true. I watched my, looked at my TV exactly 9 o'clock and the color changed. And it does affect my camera. And I called the TV company and they said, we don't know of any certain setting in the TV that has a blue light filter or whatever. I'm calling them again tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, Sue. LaDonna. I want to read you something from my book, For the Love of God. Uh, 
This is titled A Vision of God. Since tonight we're speaking about sitting in the lap of God. Let me look at my notes here. It's titled A Vision of God. So in my book, this one here. For the love of God about my journey to India to see this holy man who came to me in a dream and invited me. This is called a vision of God. He walked by me every day, the one they call the Christ. He blessed some, ignores others, ignored others. I don't know why. I want to meet his eyes to see the face of God, but he did not see me. He saw everyone else, not me. Why not me? Then one day, one wonderful day, he stood close by. I gazed into his face, and for a moment, his eyes met mine. In those eyes was infinity, more profound than space, more potent than the sun, all-knowing, all-seeing. Like Adam, I was naked before him. He saw me, what I am, what I could be, what I have attained, and where I have failed. He saw my past, my present, and my future. He saw all my sins and blemishes, my ego and my pride. He saw also what I can be in him, sitting on his lap. <laughs> if only I would surrender to him, to give up my faults and errors, my ego and my pride. His eyes held compassion for sorrows I bring upon myself. His eyes held love for me, despite who I am. His eyes held the universe and all of us in it. In his eyes, I recognize my God, my creator, my master. I saw also myself reflected as the image of God. I felt my soul being drawn into his eyes as if in a moment I could be one with him, not the petty self anymore, but a new creature in whom God shines forth. Then his eyes looked away, and my life was changed. For one eternal precious moment, I saw divinity. I saw God, and he saw me. His eyes turned away, but he still sees me. I read you this. One, it moves me inside and I'm sitting on the lap of God. But that story, that sonnet, that poem, that beautiful inspiration is the disposition I am referring to here. The tone, the timber, the intention, your wish. Could it simply be just that? Could it be a wish? And well, that all depends on you. Hi, Trudy. Can it be as simple as wishing to experience the lap of God that you have been sitting in for eternity? You may say, well, that sounds impossible. Well, is it now? It sounds impossible to do in this moment. Well, is it now? Have you ever felt joy before? Joy is evidence of the presence of God. See how easy it is? Think of something now that makes you joyful. Something you do on your own. Something that means something to you and doesn't revolve anyone else per se. Hello, Linda. Hello, Trudy. Robert Harris. <laughs> I, tell, I was telling everyone about the blue light changing on my computer. He says, maybe it's the blue light special. Hello, Yana Va Shoppers. <laughs> you, can I see your manager, please? As you recall... Something that brings you joy 
your joy is evidence of the presence of God. So there you sit, consciously, of your divine parent. You may say, well, Keith, I'm not aware that God is here. The joy you have is evidence of the presence of God. So now the work, play, fun, excitement, exhilaration, expansion begins. I'm here. I'm joyful. That joy is evidence that I'm getting closer to the conscious awareness and taking it further and further and further within myself to expand that bliss, that joy, to I become so connected to my divine parent, I could hear its thoughts, its whispers, its intention that moves through my heart what it, quote, wants for me, which is fulfillment. So when you sit and imagine you falling into the lap of your deity, as an innocent child, who can do no wrong in the eyes of your divine parent, in the eyes of Jesus, in the eyes of Buddha, in the eyes of your great-grandmother who loved you infinitely. Do you have that kind of innocence, feeling, innocence about yourself? Or do you feel tainted and dirty? And if so, now what are you going to do? Now what? Are you going to purify yourself or at least purify your consciousness and your understanding of how you think, think things are. Can you see yourself as blemish, sin free, which will create the space in you to dwell in? Because nothing let me see how I can say this. Do we not understand? the infinite power of God's forgiveness. There's nothing in the way of God's eternal forgiveness. So it requires us to release ourselves of the walls of separation between our consciousness when we sit on God's lap and intending to become aware of it. As an ongoing experience in your life, I don't mean just when you're sitting. We talk about entering the heart through these different techniques. We always, I always talk about the heart as a stargate. This is the same thing, but it's a little different. This is about a seating of yourself. Sit your ass down. Stop being so busy, so monkey-minded, such a hurry, impatient. I have all these qualities to work on myself, and I do every day. This is about a carrying around of something versus intending to go into the stargate. I'm going to fall into my heart. Of course, we can always create that disposition in the heart space. But this has a different tonality altogether. It creates a humility for one. Sit in your grandmother's lap who loves you and you love her equally. See how you feel. She's the queen. She's the goddess of fire, your grandmother or your great grandmother or that one that you looked up to. And when you sit on her lap and in her bosom and you begin to nurse the divine teat. You will receive the milk of paradise. Suddenly, through the silence, the new world appears. Brian, it must be your internet, sir. Everyone, the feed is okay with everyone? 
send me an exclamation point if the feed is good. Hello, Angela Tyner. Brian, everything looks good on my end, bro. So tonight's presentation is sitting in the lap of God. As I said a minute ago, when you fully understand who walks beside you at every moment, always has, does now, and forever will, you will never be afraid ever again. That's like walking down the street and Dwayne Johnson, the rock, is next to you. <laughs> Some people think they're going to give you crap, and all of a sudden he steps out from behind the corner. You got nothing to worry about. Now, it does not mean life is going to not going to continue where you reap what you sow. But trust me when I tell you, when you have invincibility beneath you, around you, above you, within you, and you consciously make connection to invincibility, many things will be handed to you gracefully and will fall by the wayside that you can avoid. Spirit is so intelligent. It will take some cookies out of this cookie jar and give it to you and move some things around. Regardless, you have to pay your karmic debt. Doesn't mean you can't get a cushion to buy you some time. But you got to pay your karmic debt. So how do I pay my karmic debt? You resolve the riddles of your life. Don't go into the riddles of your life expecting to find an answer. That is a riddle in and of itself. And you will bog your spiritual expansion down to a grinding halt. Go in with the intention to look. But what do you expect you are going to find? And you're looking. Expecting to find a certain something that's going to be the end all of your soul searching is a mighty trap. Just go. Go on the journey for the sake of the journey. But you will have to pay all karmic consequence. By getting the riddles of your life. Another thing that will help you to shave off karmic trouble and sit in the lap of God is to be of service to other people as often as possible without expecting anything from them. No expectation. I'm not saying that you provide a service with your life and that you should not receive payment for your services. This is not what I'm implying whatsoever. It's still service. People who work in the weight field, restaurants who are waiters and waitresses, they are working in the highest calling. They are waiting on people. They are of service. You ever thought about that? And when you are of service at every opportunity you can, God's grace begins to pour into your consciousness while you sit on divine parents' lap. Again, it's different than trying to enter the stargate. This, the stargate is almost an intention. I want to fall into this place so I can jet. Experience the cosmos. Falling into and sitting into the lap of Creator is different. I don't want to experience something except the feeling of just sitting with Jesus. Sitting with my deceased great-grandmother, 
that I remember since I was a child. There's nothing else wanted in that place. Nothing. From the divine principle. One of the very first things that came out of me, as I recorded this in 1996, which will help us to understand how we have always been sitting in the lap of God. Make no mistake about who I am, Keith. <laughs> I am God. I have no particular name. They all belong to me. Everything is God. We have always been sitting in God's lap. I am all things, all that is. I am the universal generator of supreme knowledge and divine energy. I am you. I am everything you can perceive and everything you cannot. I am the choreographer of the human dance. I am the conductor of the cosmic symphony. I am the universal playwright. I am the almighty, the most high, the creator. I am love. I am all teachers who have ever come bringing information about love and peace. I am Jesus the Christ. I am the Buddha. I am Krishna. I am Satya Sai Baba. I am all the avatars who have brought you information of love and light. I am the all-knowing, all-pervasive, and all-seeing I. I am clarity. I am union. I am the eternal. I am the absolute in and of all things. I am the Atma, the soul, and the tree of life. I am the only one. I am that I am. God am I. I come to you imbued with love and light, joy and might. My purpose is of the highest calling to give you the precious gifts of my words and my love so that you can share them with others and inspire them to join you in carrying out my mission. <laughs> that was a lot for a 30 some odd year old to receive in one bang of light. It's hitting me now. All those different titles God professed in the opening of this segment I read. I am Jesus. I am this. I am you. Everything you can perceive. Everything you cannot. I am the tree of life. I am all teachers that came forth bringing information of love and peace. God's on the present. We have been sitting in its lap the whole time looking for other chairs and other laps to sit in thinking it would bring us some sort of temporary happiness before we make the trip to purgatory or hell the truth will sit there for eternity and patiently wait for your conscious return sitting on your parents' lap. So God's omnipresence clearly, unmistakably defines everything is because of the lap. There's many different applications to the word lap. Everything is because of the lap of Creator. Everything sits in the lap of Creator. Lap doesn't only mean your lap, but this is what I mostly mean it for tonight, to create an image. But the lap means the bed, the bedrock, the basis. The first brick one should use to erect their house, their home, rather. The home is consciousness. Homecoming, my new book I'm coming out with, in about eight months, thanks to John Hunt Publishing, Division, six, Hunt, uh, six books. Thank you, Gavin Lee Davies. This book is titled Homecoming, Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. Are you crossing that bridge? Do you feel that you are at least taking baby steps? Are you? If you are, fantastic. Don't stop. 
turn up the gas, pick up your gate, walk through the gate, sitting in the lap of God. Joy is evidence of the presence of Creator. Find those things that bring you joy. Stay in it. Do what you love. Throughout your day, if you find yourself shifting to a space that's not so joyful, don't beat yourself up. In so doing, you distance yourself from the lap of God consciously. Pull out a picture of someone you love and look at it. And you will see the joy just return simply. Put on a piece of music that moves you. And the joy will return simply. Walk around everywhere you can. Try it. Do it now. Put your hands together like this in Namaskar. I do this in public all the time. Someone will say, see you later, Keith. I'll say, blessings. When you are in Namaskar, you cannot have a negative thought. It is impossible. Try it. Walk around your house when you're by yourself, namaskaring your stove and your toilet and your sofa and your TV and all the things that you use. Walk around with this disposition of namaskar, whether you're doing it outwardly or not. One moment, I'm looking for a something, something, and magically it appears. Or does it? <laughs> Tonight's presentation, sitting in the lap of God. Hello, Sean. Hello, John. Nathan's in the house, throwing out his one words that he always does. Love it. Victoria Smith. Sitting in the lap of God. I've been saying this since this presentation started. It's a beautiful idea. It creates a beautiful image. Try it. What would that be like for you? If you get to meet Jesus, the Christ, the man who became the infinite spirit called the Christ. Don't confuse the two. There is a very subtle difference between Jesus and the Christ. Until Jesus was baptized and became anointed with this, the Holy Spirit and became illumined, fully illumined. The Christ principle, yes, entered into Jesus as well. That's why we have the same opportunity as Christians or Buddhists, any teacher that represents love and light is showing us the way to the store. Highway 1 takes us to the supermarket where we get our manna, sustenance for life, our life bread. Likewise, when we walk the path of the Christ or the Buddha or your great-grandmother that taught you so many wonderful things about your life, you become it. But you got to get walking. You got to get to stepping. Forward is inward, and inward is upward. Vice versa. They all three, you can use them in whatever order. Inward is upward, upward is forward. You have to pick up your gate, people, towards your joy, your endless joy. Stop stewing on the past and dwelling on things that are keeping you consciously out of the lap of your Creator. Imagine you were sitting, you, you're sitting in the lap of Jesus. How do you think that would feel? And the words come to your mind, oh my God, literally and metaphorically at the same time. Nathan says we are all God. We are all gods. Yes, we are. But before we all go get high strung <laughs> and full of ourselves on the principle that everything is God and so are we, sitting on the lap of God and painting that image to apply it in your life as an intention to reach your divine parent consciously in a way that you understand requires humility. I understand I'm God. 
I understand that you are. I understand that we all are. But that humility is what opens up the doorway while we are sitting on the lap of Creator. We're always in the lap of Creator. The entire universe rests in the lap of the divine. So as you use this idea of sitting on Jesus' lap, the Christ's lap, in your own innocence, because nothing you can do, nothing you can do exceeds the parameters of the power of God's forgiveness. Nothing. So to return to the garden, as you exist on the lap of Creator already, and become that child, how would it feel to sit in the lap of Jesus? Buddha. Any human being that inspired you as a deity or whatever it may be, you get all giddy inside. You don't know what to do with that, do you? Settle down. Figure out what to do with that. If you need an image, find an image and sit your ass in Jesus' lap. See what happens to you. You will feel a presence. But it requires one to be fully present to feel presence. That's the gift. Merry Christmas or Merry Christ Mass. Let's look to the room. Peter Coyle says, I'd ask Jesus one question. Why did you send me back? I didn't define heart. <laughs> Why did he send you back? Peter, I know exactly why he sent you back. Peter, the rock, he sent you back just so you could be in my life and help be that rock. <laughs> Thank you for coming back and entertaining me and being with me, bro. <sighs> Sitting in the lap of Creator. What would it be like for you if you're a Buddhist to sit with Buddha or even the Dalai Lama? How would that feel for you? Well, I'm not doing that, so I can't really feel that. Well, you're already sitting in the lap of Creator. Can you find the innocence and the feelings within you and call them up and watch this gate, Stargate, open up? I do it. I'm doing it right now in this moment, being with you, as many of you are, communicating, communicating and supporting this beautiful message yourself. Namaskar. No negativity can happen to you as far as thinking or verbiaging when you're namaskar. Why do spiritual people do this? Not because it looks cool and I'm part of a, I'm on a bandwagon and the trendy thing, so... keeps you in the divine space the divine space the divine lap take a short pause gonna be right back I have no doubt that we're going to go into vessel mode and I'm going to invite everyone when I go into vessel mode in just a minute I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes I'm gonna give you an idea what it's gonna be like when I come back to close your eyes and intend to fall consciously into the lap of which you already sit, your divine parents' lap. And I'm going to ask you to namaskar when I go into vessel mode. See if you can feel that presence that effortlessly pours through me. You will feel it. Because in your disposition, and your wanting, your yearning, your burning, your churning for something of a greater nature, that you have not known before until you realize that you are always sitting in the lap of God. If you realize who walks beside you at all times, you will never be afraid again. When you create this kind of opening to receive, receive, you do. The angel of love. It's about someone, my singer Bernard, 
having a, a, having an experience of an angelic presence in his room, in his bedroom. Check it out. Sitting in the lap of God.
Here we find ourselves again sitting in the same place, same room, same forum, same ideas. Some new ones have been coming down the pike, wouldn't you say? You put them into motion, move out of dismay. Now's the time for no longer any delay. Are you keeping up with the Joneses? The spiritual Joneses, that is. Many people are exceeding, excelling, and expanding, doing the work. And yet spirit arrives here again while you sit here in the lap of God. You are nearer than you can possibly imagine to the consciousness that simply awaits you just out of your bandwidth of rational, logical thinking. Well, soul, how do I do that? Be joyful. Be present here now. Just be joyful. Stay in joy. It will shave miles off of what you call your spiritual work. When you catch yourself deviating from what truly is the norm, because the norm is always conscious as you sit in the lap of Creator, everything else is abnormal and diseased and insane. And it goes nowhere except into the same rabbit hole, chasing your same tail with the same results. Have you tried just sitting in the lap of Creator? Simply just sitting, imagining that you are there, protected, indestructible, nurtured, loved, peaceful. All these wonderful qualities you know of spirit. You've been sitting in the lap of spirit the whole time. Never once did you decide to turn around and look in spirit's face so that you could see the reflection of your own. You just sat there facing this way, kicking your legs like children do, which is fun in and of itself. But I am referring to now is not participating. Participate. Don't wait. Joy, 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 joy deep in your heart. It will keep you aligned with spirit versus all the gruffing and toughing and the roughing it all from big to small simply just be be happy what can I do in this moment to be happy spirit can think of many different things but it's for each individual to choose win or lose sing the love song or the blues it's all up to you so how do you stay in it consistently that's the question everyone wants to know. Spirit can only put your hand on the light switch. You have to flip it. In closing, I want to read something to you. Hello, everyone. Heather Lynn and the other Heather. Hello. In closing, from the Divine Principle. <laughs> One moment, let me look for the right. This is titled, Realizing God. This is perfect closer for this presentation. Sitting in the lap of God. All who seek divinity, the lap of God, must live a life free from wanting, for that is the source and cause of spiritual bondage. As long as one is constantly wanting, one will only fall farther away from the selflessness of grace 
and into the selfishness of ego. The ego mind is the cloth that veils consciousness. Your wants are its threads, but when you give up your constant wanting, the ego threads will fall away and the cloth will disappear, revealing your true nature, the pure, genuine self that is the soul. God realization will happen for you when you finally free yourself from the brain. The senses. The mind. The wanter. <laughs> Once you break out of your finite little prison of individuality, You will become conscious, enlightened, one with cosmic power. Thus you will reach God. Tomorrow night's presentation is Spiritual Liberation on Sale, 99 cent. I love you, beautiful tribe. Move forward. Be happy. God damn it, be happy. If that's what you want, peace.